Welcome to this edition of the Weekly Dose, Challenge Your Perspective. This is Patrick Dare from Washington, D.C. On this day, Saturday, March the 30th, 2013, I take the opportunity to congratulate the President-elect, Mr. Uhuru Kenyatta, and his running mate, Mr. William Ruto. On March the 4th, Kenyans in their numbers turned out 86% to vote for their leadership. A week followed of counting and recounting and confusion of who was going to be the winner, of doubt, doubt as to whether the process worked as to whether this was a fair election. And sure enough, after the IABC declared that Uhuru Kenyatta had garnered the 50.07% required by the Constitution, they declared him the president-elect. A petition followed that, led by the Code Coalition presidential candidate, Mr. Raila Amolo Odinga. This petition brought to the Supreme Court is part of what the Constitution says whenever there's a dispute. And for the next two weeks, again, Kenyans were very patient waiting, waiting to see the democracy and that the institutions that are being formed by this young democracy would work. And the six people, the six justices, had this enormous task to affirm to Kenyans that the process works. And today, they came up with the verdict to affirm the election of Mr. Uhuru Kenyatta. It was a week of anxiety, a week of pain to those that still believed that justice would not be done. It was a week that there was some silence that seemed almost eerie, waiting. What would this result be? But one thing is that Kenyans believed that the institution would work and that we, as a democracy, are growing. Mr. President-elect, your task ahead is to heal the wounds of the more than half that did not vote for you. You must remember that you are now the president of Kenya, of all Kenyans, from north to south, from east to west, the middle, from all corners of Kenya. For a long time, a lot of parts of Kenya have been neglected. In fact, they don't feel that they're Kenyans. You must break from this tradition, and you must break away from the perception that the past three presidents have put in the minds of Kenyans, including your father. You cannot ignore any part of Kenya because you are now the president of Kenya and for all Kenyans. We understand, and most Kenyans will understand, within reason, that you will want people around you 
that you trust, that you believe will advance the policies that you want to bring about. That's understandable. Most administrations do. They bring in people that they trust. But you must show that the people you trust is from a cross-section of Kenyans. You must break away from the tradition of top-heavy, almost to the man, being from one tribe. You must break away from the idea that the perception of the powerful ministries goes only to either the Kikuyu or the Kalenjin. Yes, we know that you're in a coalition government and that the agreement was that maybe you'd share those posts 50-50. We know that the coalition, the Jubilee coalition, is mostly of Kalenjins and Kikuyus. And that's what probably pains the rest of the country. And that is what you must break away from. Because not to do that, you will perpetuate that very same notion. And that will be a wound that will keep eating at the other 40 different tribes that make the family of Kenya. Not all permanent secretaries, cabinet ministers, should come from a few places. There must be a cross-section. There is a Turkana somewhere who is very well educated and has the experience necessary to do something in your government, to be a minister. There's a Rendile somewhere. There's a Pokot somewhere. There's a Lua somewhere. There's a Luya. There's a Kisi. There's a Kamba. And many more tribes. There's a Maasai somewhere that you must look into and say, you're my brother, you're Kenyan, you can do this. We must break away from the perception that the top cream of ministries go to a particular tribe. Not all finance ministers have to be a Kikuyu. Not all defense ministers have to be a Kikuyu or a Kainji. You must look for, you must think out of the box. You must include all Kenyans. You must start the healing of this country. You have to advance the concept of democracy and fairness. That Kenya as a family will exist together, however much the end fight is. We know what happened in 2007, 2008, and those are still very, very raw wounds. We must not stalk those wounds. This country is stronger together. The soul of Kenya is stronger being built together. We can't have a situation where the perception of this few clique of people surrounding you and making a fence with barbed wires for all the other 40, close to 50% of people who did not vote for you. You must start the healing process right from the day that you take that Bible and swear to hold the constitution of the Republic of Kenya. If you do that, your place in history will judge you well, despite all the issues that surround you at this point. You must advance the very concept that this is a democracy 
that is young, that is struggling to maturity, and that makes three steps forward and probably makes four back. Next time makes five and makes four back. We need you to make six steps forward, even if we're going to make five steps back. But each time the trajectory has to be seen to be advancing forward. And that is a mantle that you have that you can bring to this country. And for you, Raila Odinga, you have fought gallantly. You have suffered personally. You have been persistent. You have gracefully conceded. The very institutions that you have fought to bring about has done its job. And whether we like it or not, that is the job expected of them. They will say nay, they'll say yay. But that is what democracy brings about. You must go out with your head held high. For you have allowed, in my personal opinion, you have allowed for this kind of situation to be in Kenya. An unimaginable situation 10, 20, 30 years ago. You have fought for the spirit, for the soul of Kenya. There's nothing to be ashamed about. You may never be the president of Kenya, but as many other freedom fighters, they let other people rip that fruit. And we wish you well. You are a true son of Kenya. Even those that did not vote for you, deep down in their soul, they know. The rooters of this world know that. I'm sure Mr. Kenyatta knows that. And everybody else knows that. And so, go gracefully. You still have a lot to contribute. You don't have to be in government to contribute. And we thank you for that space. And for all Kenyans, May we maintain peace. We may not always agree. We will cry. We will mourn. We'll be acrimonious. But we must maintain peace. We must now embrace each other and say, brother, sister, we are Kenyans. And together, we are stronger. Together, we will make this country a beacon of democracy and peace and love, and fairness, and security for all. Let us be Kenyans, brothers and sisters. May God bless all Kenyans, and may God bless Kenya. This is Patrick Dare from Washington, D.C., bringing you your weekly dose, challenging your perspective. Thank you.